So, as you mentioned, my name is Selena Hong, and I am from Antenna House, Inc. And for some of you who may be familiar with Antenna House, you might find it interesting that we're actually a Japanese-owned company, and all of our PDF formatting and conversion software is developed and regression tested in Japan. And today, oh, and obviously I'm, I'm not from Japan. Um, I work at, uh, I work in an office um, in the United States, as you can tell from my very apparent accent, American accent. Um, so we do have a subsidiary, uh, two offices in, in the United States. Now today I'm gonna to be talking about a visual comparison approach to automated regression testing. Now I know everyone in this room knows what regression testing is as um, it's been mentioned and discussed in earlier presentations, but I just wanna uh, re reiterate how important it is and kind of de define it generally um, just for the purposes of this presentation. So what it is, is a type of software testing that seeks to find and uncover new bugs anytime software has undergone any changes, um, new enhancements or bug fixes. You want to test your software over and over again to make sure that the new features are working properly and that it hasn't corrupted any of the old features that were once working. So, you know, this is um, a very crucial step in software development, often overlooked. But for, for us in Tenna House, we have thousands of copies of our software used all around the world, being, being used today, and we want to make sure that we do as much regression testing as possible so that if our customers update um, our software, they can still produce the same consistent, accurate results as they did before they updated with our software. So there are many different methods and ways to do regression testing, and our, our formatting engine, called Antenna House Formatter, it formats and produces PDFs as, as outputs, final outputs. So like many organizations that do produce PDFs from XML, um, the easiest way to detect any changes that has happened between uh, software versions is to take the final output and just visually compare side by side, um, just to see if there are any differences, any discrepancies. And what they could mean is, you know, if you do see differences, it can tell you if the new release is working properly, or if, you know, if there's missing content, you can tell if there's a bug in the new release. Um, and we're talking about um, comparing visually, not comparing the underlying code, because Oftentimes, different, two PDFs with different internal structures can produce the same visual output. And at the end of the day, we're just concerned with you know, what are differ different between the visual outputs. Um, so our test, our test suites generally consist of around 10,000 pages. And it used to take our Japanese developers who did the regression testing, it used to take them around three days' time to do it, to complete, because they did it manually. And that's what we used to do when it came to regression testing. We would just use the human eye to look and compare 10,000 pages and see if there are any changes. Now, I know that sounds insane. Like, why would anyone do that to themselves? But, um, but that's what they did. And, of course, there are so many different issues, so many different problems that we come across. Um, you know, it's prone to... Errors, and there's no way you can find every single change just using uh, humans to look at it. It's very time consuming, it's so inefficient, and it often led to delays in product releases. We couldn't do enough regression testing, so of course, you know, our customers would end up finding these bugs and report it back to us, complain, and um, you know, we didn't, we, we did not like that. So, in an effort to kind of help the developers out in Japan, our support team in the US, they agreed to take over that responsibility, that burden of doing the visual regression testing so, so that um, the developers can use all of their time and effort to just focus on the development of the software and to be able to provide our customers with you know, more maintenance releases. We want at least eight maintenance releases a year and um, that way we can have an overall better product for our customers in a timely fashion. But it didn't take very long for our support team to realize that the manual way of doing visual regression testing was just unacceptable. It was so tedious, they hated it, and um, 
we just really, really wanted to find a better solution, preferably an automated solution to replace the you know, humans doing this kind of testing. And there are many challenges that we found. Um, we really wanted a tool that would be able to compare the PDFs on a visual level as opposed to the underlying code, which I mentioned. You know, it just doesn't work for us because we're, we're trying to find differences between visual outputs. And we wanted something that was fast and very, very robust and could handle our test suite of 10,000 pages without any errors. Um, and we also wanted a method to generate very meaningful reports that could highlight the differences. Um, so we tested out many different uh, kind of solutions for us, but none of them met all of the requirements that we had because we were very needy. And so um, we decided to just develop our own automated regression testing system, which we call Antenna House Regression Testing System, AHRTS for short. So what is it? It's a Java application, and it is written in Scala. So, yeah. um, so that's all I'm going to say about that, because you know, I'm sure that the last presentation was so, <laughs> exactly, which is very fresh in our minds. Um, and we do have very nice user, uh, we have very nice user-friendly interface. It's very intuitive, that runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And, Mac. and also, we have added in a command line API so that you can integrate um, this, this, this tool into a bigger system and also so that our developers and the regression testing team who does regression testing um, can both use this tool. And it's an automated visual regression, uh, it's an automated visual comparison tool. And what it does is it takes the PDFs and it converts them to bitmaps and then compares on a pixel by pixel level, page by page. So it's very, very accurate in terms of finding, you know, even the most minute changes that could be very, very important that obviously humans will miss. And it is scalable and it's very fast. Um, you can compare individual PDFs to one another or you can compare directories of PDFs to one another. And, you know, we originally developed this tool to do regression testing of new releases of the tennis formatter internally. So, of course, we have a version that has integration with Internet Formatter. So you can make your test cases and um, do the rendering with you know, two versions of Internet Formatter within the system, and then it will compare all the PDFs. And um, it's an automated system for comparing not only PDFs that were rendered by Internet Formatter, but also you know, just about any type of PDF out there from any source, from any rendering engine. So essentially, it can do regression testing for any software that produces PDFs. Now, beyond regression testing, here at the bottom is just a few examples of use cases or possible uses for this tool because it is essentially a PDF to PDF comparison tool. Okay, so I know you guys are all excited and you want to see a demo of this because Charles has hyped up how, um, how exciting this product is. Um, but before we go into that, I will show you a demo, but I just want to um, show you the process under the hood, what's going on um, behind the scenes and how it's doing the comparison. So first, um, you select the two PDFs, uh, the baseline PDF and then the new PDF that you want to compare. And like I said, you can, um, you can select individual PDFs or directories of PDFs. But this uh, flowchart that I have here is a comparison process of um, just, it, it, does, it, does it, it performs uh, one at a time, one PDF set at a time. So you first select your PDFs, and then it will extract the PDF code as character strings. And then it homogenizes the properties, which means it just throws away you know, any information that doesn't need to be compared, like the PDF creation date that changes all the time. And then it, does, it first does um, a comparison uh, bit by bit check, and if, if everything is the same, all the bits are the same, then a, a report will pop up that says, you know, these two PDFs have no differences. But if they're different, then it will be further tested, and that's when the PDFs will be converted to bitmaps. And then uh, what it will do is it will do a checksum comparison, and if there are differences, then it will compare on the pixel-by-pixel pixel level, page-by-page. 
And if all the pixels line up, everything's the same, then you know, the report will say these pages, no differences. But if there are differences, even like a tiny little shift in a pixel from one PDF that's not in the other, this tool could detect that and it'll say, these two PDFs are different, it'll create a composite image of differences, and then that will be included in the XML report that we have um, that will show you exactly where the differences are. And the report is originally formatted in XML, so it's accessible and it can be reused over again um, for other purposes. Does it, does it detect the same sort of content in a document that's one, with a PDF one is A4 and PDF two is letter? Is that possible that you have to detect that you have the equivalent document, but it's rendered using different paper forms? Different paper forms. That is a very interesting question. I, I don't know if I can answer that, but I will ask the developers and I will get back to you if you give me your contact afterwards. Um, that is a very important question. Um, so back to this. Um, the XML reports are then formatted to PDFs using XSLFO with a restricted copy of the Tenhouse formatter that is embedded in the system. And it is only used for that purpose, just to generate the reports. Okay. So now I can show you. I can show you a demo. Okay, so here we have our beautiful, user-friendly, intuitive uh, interface. And I have the PDF to PDF compare tab open. So like I said before, you can, you can select individual PDFs to be compared, but I'm gonna show you directories of PDFs. So I have a baseline PDFs in, in a folder, there's about four of them. So I'm gonna drag and drop the baseline directories and the new directories, and then we will hit compare. And at the very bottom, you can see that it tells you, okay, it's performing um, the comparison process on one out of the four pages, so the first page, uh, for the first doc, document, set of documents. And then here, it shows you um, the process, the status. So it's rendering every single page from both uh, sets of both uh, PDFs to bitmaps. And now it's comparing the bitmaps. And then it's going to generate the report. And then it's going to run through and do the same thing for all three other PDF documents. And then an overview report will pop up like this. So um, it lists out how many... PDFs it has compared in the directory, so there's four. The first one obviously has a difference, that's why it's in red, and then the green, that means that they're all the same. So um, the ones that have differences, they're actually hyperlinks that you can click on, so then it will take you straight to the individual report so you don't need to mess around. And at the very top, at the very top, you can see that it tells you which PDFs it has compared and which ones you're looking at and how many pages are in both PDFs. There's 1,136 pages. This is a, a very big file. It's actually the um, infamous Les Miserables that I had downloaded from Project Greenberg. So um, here it tells you how many pages out of those 1,136 pages have differences. So in our case, we have four. And then it lists uh, the page numbers. And these reports, um, this report will only show you the pages that have differences. That way you don't have to scroll through the entire document to look for the changes, which would be ridiculous. Um, so what's very interesting and unique about these reports is that the, right, the left and right panes, the green and red, um, these are original PDF pages that were extracted from their respective files. So that is, um, that's possible due to Intent House Formatter's ability to embed PDFs within a PDF. And in the middle, I'll zoom in, is the bitmap composite that highlights and also has uh, color coding to identify what, where the changes are and what they are. So the red content is from the old PDF, or the baseline PDF, and then the new is, or the green is from the new PDF. So I don't know if you guys can see, but what it's showing me is that the green, P, uh, the green content has been shifted over to the right a little bit. So if I look at the new PDF, there is indeed a, an extra space in front, in, uh, in front of that line. 
and the old PDF, the baseline PDF, there shouldn't be a space at all, and there's not. So these reports, they're, they're very meaningful, and we did it that way because we want um, you know, any users that are examining these changes or these differences to be able to see what they are right away and be able to go back to the software and see you know, what's going on, why is this happening. Um, behind the PDFs is an XSL style sheet that we have changed many times and fine-tuned to get to you know, the beautiful layout that we have today. And users can customize this, it is accessible. And they can add and uh, remove any information that they want. So, let's go back to the presentation. So now, the benefits that we have seen, um, you know, significant improvements that we've seen um, since using this tool to do internal regression testing for our software. It's automated, you know, you don't need that many people um, to do the regression testing because it just takes a couple clicks of a button um, and then you just need a couple people to actually review the reports. So our, let's go back to our test suite um, of 10,000 pages. That used to take three days, now it takes less than two hours, which is pretty impressive, I would have to say. Um, it does handle large document comparisons. There is no page limit to how many pages you want to compare. And that means we can do more regression testing it can, and we're very confident that it finds every single minute change or difference between those PDFs from um, different versions of the software. And so we were able to catch more bugs and have less issues with, the, with our software and uh, provide a, an overall better product to our customers in a timely fashion. So to conclude, um, we call this system, a, we, we call it a regression testing system, but underneath it all, it is essentially a PDF to PDF comparison tool. And it's important to note that, you know, even a simple step like comparing PDFs, those differences that we find, those changes, it means a lot. It could tell us a lot about what's going on behind the PDF, you know, what's going on with our software. And it can have a significant impact on improving, improving the software behind the PDFs as well as ensuring that the software delivers accurate results. And... Um, that is the end of my presentation. If you guys are interested in learning more or um, seeing some more features that we have that I couldn't present in the presentation, um, just let me know. You know, I'm going to be here today and tomorrow, so come find me. And um, we also have an evaluation version if anyone wants to try that as well. Um, and that is it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>
feature and for just the avenue. Are any of your competitors using your system? <laughs> Are any of our competitors using yes. this? Um, not that we know of. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. Um, well, he, um, do you think it would be a good idea to perhaps um, add in an exclusion? So we do have that. We actually do have that. I just didn't mention that. Yeah, there are a couple features that I left out because it just takes too long. Um, but yes, we can exclude margins, like left and right, bottom and top. And you can actually, there's a preview window that will pop up. And you can actually see, you know, you can move the margin and um, see the, the pages to make sure that you're not cutting off anything that is important that you do actually want to compare. Then perhaps mm -hmm. if you add something new. Um, yes. You know, this is just a suggestion. Just exclude that block of pixels if you if you know it. It's a, yes, um, that is true. It's a known sort of right. change which you don't want to have to appear in the next report. You, you just copy the new output PDF to the uh, expectations uh, directory, so you would compare it uh, from then on to the new PDF, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. You could just take out that one piece of the PDF oh, and compare, yeah. and then the rest of it you know should be the same, or the rest of it you can, you know, cut it out and compare those. Well, well, yeah, I mean, as, as you keep on building, ultimately when you accept that that new PDF is, that's the way forward, that is then the golden copy. And then further further improvements and right. test against that golden copy. Yeah. Okay, there's a question up here. Yes. Um, it's, it's clear that this does an official comparison of the official PDF. Yes. Increasingly, people are using PDFs, but the metadata they want to embed in it. For instance, uh, the web links that you might have as an interactive web link, mm -hmm. I can't see the a visual comparison will tell you whether or not the, it can, the yeah, new it, rendering it engine can't has made do that. the, web, the uh, interactive web um, I, I, There is one check that it does that uh, I'm not sure whether you covered. The initial check between two PDFs oh, yes, is, is, is like an MD5 shallow sum check. Uh, okay, so even, so even if the two documents look identical, if, if the metadata inside them is different, obviously the shallow sum is going to be different.